payment thing, it's so fascinating because it is, it is straight up um, unabashed chaos. And at the same time, um, there are people there in the industry right. that are really good to talk to because if you want to find out what's really going on with uh, with what's coming down the pipe for uh, like streaming technologies and uh, and cameras, just all of it, you could talk to those people because they're they're the people that are doing it before everyone else, right? Yep. Yeah, and and then just the technology systems they have to have in place to. Uh, to manage all the stuff they're doing oh right that too oh, holy crap it's crazy and then there's the spectacle that part <laughs> i wasn't there not a lot spent that much time there that i didn't see much so it's a casual viewing that seems appropriate yeah all right, that place. How's everybody out there on YouTube? Nobody watching yet? Give her a couple minutes. Tweet it. Boy, I'm starting to see people not on Twitter anymore. Yeah, that's becoming a thing. Andrew's not on anymore. Yeah, I, I still have enough stuff that's uh, linked through Twitter that um, I can't just yeah, completely abandon it. Although. Okay. I am favoring Mastodon over Twitter. Yeah. Well, now I think about it. why did I toot on Mastodon when it's gonna when I got a link to Twitter. Whoops. That'd be two toots. Toot. She's not responding. All right. Find that hot link. No, no response from her. It'd just be you and me. So, uh, if that's the case, huh, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll jump in. No sense keeping everybody waiting here. Oh, oh she's coming. We can wait. All right. Yay. Oh, yeah. 237. She missed the whole AVN discussion. No. Uh, 
There was the that interested. Do you ever watch Father Guy on YouTube? Uh, Antenna Man. Antenna Man. He does stuff about antennas and TV and set top boxes and. Um, oh, I think I've seen a couple of his videos. Yeah. yeah. That sounds really familiar. Yeah, that ATSC 3.0 is about coming out, the new standard for streaming and TV. It's supposed to uh, make the picture even crisper than it already is. There's a whole booth just for that. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. But... <clears throat> Start this recording while we're waiting. I'll, I'll channel my, my inner Kelly. How do you do, Buckaroo? Oh, how, how do you do, Buckaroos? I've heard that a long time. <laughs> if anybody listening, go check out the Jeff was on uh, with Matt Geekab. What was the last episode, I think? <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. Always is with the boys. And get us talking about Synology and, uh, well, you can fill a whole show, which actually I think is what we did. I think that was uh, oh, just a, a Synology special. Yeah, I want that new Synology. That thing looks cool. Yeah. Start the Zoom link just in case. All right, we'll give her two minutes. And... Hello into tech. How are you in the chat? Just about to start here. Maybe Kelly forgot where her uh, desk is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there she is. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry about that. Oh. How do you do, buckaroos? <laughs> Get up and dance, underpants. Yes, Me. I can sense with the things. Um, yes. It's a whole thing. Hi, guys. One sec. Hi. No problem. <laughs> it's a process. Well, it is when you basically dismantle your entire desk and try mm. to redo, you know, the things for the stuff. Yeah, I hope you learned your lesson. Um, well, I did, which is that I need to do a better job of it. And then when I say I'm going to be on a podcast on Thursday, I really need to like make sure that I've taken care of my rewiring before that. Uh, that helps. <laughs> it's Sorry to hear about that. And to tech, it's got COVID or he had COVID light. Wait, what? In the, in the chat. And to tech is in the chat. Oh, no. No, not and, oh, no, that he's in the chat, but oh, no, to the diagnosis. Oh, no, to the COVID. It says getting over COVID yeah, light. That's never great. Okay. Right. Well, I'm glad they're getting over it. Yes. So if I here, reset <clears throat> my microphone to something better. That oh. microphone's better. <laughs> that Did one. it just that... get hot in here? <laughs> Good. <laughs> there she then, is. Then if I come over here. Turn the lights on. 
There we go. There you go. go. Okay. Yay. Hi, kids. Hi. Okay, now it's a party. It's a party now. Oh, yeah. Then we'll, then we'll get going right away. All right. It's 106 that... miles to Chicago. It's yep. dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Sunglasses. Hit it. And a half Hit a pack it. of cigarettes. <laughs> uh, in five, four, three, two. Welcome to episode 237 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week, Kelly Gamont, is here. Happy New Year, and welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing okay. How about you? Doing well, doing well, and glad you're here, and glad also Jeff Gammon is here. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing awesome, and I'm really happy to get to hang out with both of you. Yes, me too. It's been like way too long. We haven't had a show since the end of 2022. It's our first show of 2023. Welcome Bob back and all kinds of that fun stuff and all kinds of news. And this thing called CES happened last week. So we're going we're gonna to be touching about that because I did, I did get to attend that uh, lovely conference, which was a lot of fun. Got to hang out with uh, our friends, uh, Mr. Joyner and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, Mr. Braun, and uh, Pilot Pete, and a lot of other great uh, folks. So it was a lot of fun, and we'll, you'll hear about that. Uh, but uh, hey, let's just jump into some of the news, because there is a lot of news this week as well. Um, first story, Comcast Xfinity Stream app is now gaining AirPlay support. Comcast uh, has now added AirPlay support, Yahoo! with its Xfinity Stream app, allowing the Comcast cable subscribers to AirPlay to stream content from an iPad, an iPhone, to an Apple TV, or another AirPlay-enabled speaker or set-top box. Uh, Comcast says that uh, they can stream live news and supports and on-demand movies and all kinds of stuff because they were so restrictive to this. It was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, uh, this is super good news, and it only made total sense because they had to give up the fact that streaming is here to stay. Right, Kelly? Yeah, I kind of, I really feel like that took a lot longer than it should have, mm -hmm. uh, to put it mildly. Um, uh, see, also like uh, Sony and the the disc man and like Sony stance on like, <laughs> yeah, many right. digital things. Um, so yeah, and and part of the reason for that is because um, it wasn't like you were getting around anything by airplaying it. Like I want to be able to watch this on a nicer display than the place that I have access to it or something and you know that's that shouldn't be a hurdle I kind of feel like if if you are a television provider and not necessarily a streaming only provider then you should take every advantage you have and if that is I have a customer then uh, let them play your stuff that they are paying for on whatever they want so that they continue to be a paying customer. And I don't understand why yeah. that is. That sounds like such a revolutionary thing. So, yeah. Yeah, revolutionary. Yeah, well, it's Comcast. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they spent think, all week managing my expectations. I'm here yes. to tell you my connection and, has and been. You have to wa wonder why I've, I have AT&T Fiber as my internet now and hoping soon to say goodbye to comcast honestly but yeah. uh and some fingers of us are crossed stuck with i it. can do the same because it's been up and down uh for no apparent reason yeah uh most of the week so yeah super great and i know, I know jeff's been having awesome awesome results with the, with the x <laughs> as well right <laughs> you know i i look at it from the perspective of at least there's a broadband provider in boulder which is yeah. absolutely insane because uh, th that shouldn't be the defining factor, but here we are. Um, uh, and, you know, in uh, Comcast Xfinity's defense, isn't it great that they are on the bleeding edge of providing us these incredibly useful technologies like AirPlay support? Yeah, for <laughs> four years. Five years after everybody <laughs> else has given it to us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yay, yay, Comcast. Um, yeah, yeah. They they lost me as a um, as a content provider, um, and the only reason they had been a content provider was because up until just recently, uh, 
the uh, the only way to get a reasonable priced broadband connection with them was to also pay for television content. Yes. And, uh, and, and they can't do that anymore. So now they're offering us these really great packages mm-hmm. just to cater to our users' needs. No, no packages. That's what they're offering. Yeah. And <laughs> it's uh, all or nothing. <laughs> which, yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, and ultimately, okay, whatever. That's fine. I don't care because the, uh, the content I watch, I'm, I'm paying for through, uh, through other subscriptions anyhow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. But, you know, had Comcast given me the opportunity to uh, to have more flexibility in the way that I display my content, maybe I would have thought twice about uh, about dumping all the channels when that opportunity arose. Same. That is true. This is yeah. true. I won't uh, say what it is, but there is something that I used to watch on broadcast television uh, that is no longer available on broadcast television. It's only available through a, a streaming service. And uh, I'm at the point where I'm starting to do the, do the math on uh, getting rid of cable altogether. Like, I love my TiVo, but it doesn't do anything for me anymore. No, like, TiVo is so It all cool. just runs, it all, it just records suggestions because like none of my, like, I'm not getting a chance to watch any of the things that I have, any of the other things I have season past. I'm not seeking them out regularly. I don't just yeah. sort of, sit and watch broadcast television like I used to so um yeah I'm kind of like we're still going to end up having to have a, t- a, a tv package of some sort to continue to get $25 a month off or whatever but um if if fiber ever comes to pass in my corner of the world or I'm able to get some other reliable service option like uh um t-mobile 5g home internet which was mentioned in the chat um yes it's entirely possible that uh, I will be able to forsake Comcast entirely um, and just keep the streaming services I have and call it good. So we'll see. Yep. Uh, and to tech in the chat and that's at youtube.com slash in touch with iOS uh, says he switched. So as they switched over to uh, T-Mobile 5G home internet for 50 bucks a month from Spectrum, loves it. And mm. uh, as long as you don't leave, it's fifty bucks. And then he also says, "Phil, uh, Philo for the win." Yeah, they have some other good channels too. So um, yeah. let's go ahead and move on to the next story, which is Eddie Q shared letter reflecting on Apple's services in 2022. Apple Apple uh, highlighted the success of their services in 2022, which of course includes the App Store, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, Apple TV Plus, Apple Fitness Plus, Apple News Plus, Apple Maps, Apple Pay, Apple Card, and it just keeps going. Uh, the whole wh- orchard. The whole orchard, yes. <laughs> one, one notable statistic was shared by Apple is the fact that App Store developers have now earned more than $320 billion since 20, 2008. Meanwhile, Apple Fitness Plus now has 3,500 workouts and med- meditations available in its library. Apple Music has over 100 million songs and blah, 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 blah. blah. And then they, they actually released a press release. They actually have us put out a, a press release on this. And... Uh, I'll just read the one thing uh, in the first sentence here. What the Addy said is 2022 is a groundbreaking year for entertainment. And at some point over the past year, you probably discovered a new app, a new song, a new TV show or a movie or a game, an experience that made you laugh, taught something new uh, or helped you see the world in a new way and, and moved you to share it with others. It's uh, it's extraordinary what really what Apple has done. You now we've got a link in the show notes here as far as the, uh, the press release as well as this uh, article. Um, but uh, it's good, good to see that this is uh, this is happening. And uh, what do you think, uh, Jeff, on this? Um, yeah, if, if there was ever any doubt in your mind that Apple is a services company, uh, in addition to a hardware company, mm-hmm. well, they they took care of that with with this press release. Uh, the timing of the press release, I think, was also very intentional to remind people that Apple is very, very committed to all of their content services because uh, they they also did just lose um, or are about to lose the guy. Um, the head of serv- or the not the head of services, but um, somebody at services really, really high up is is yeah the guy that came from Time Warner. Month. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Who I also absolutely cannot 
<laughs> Miss Jane, but that guy, yeah, yeah he's we, we, we know what the, we, we know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, but Peter yeah, Stern. It's, uh, Peter there Stern. you go. Peter Stern. Uh, Thank you. They, they, they wrote a nice, actually a very good press release that can give you a recap of all the services and you know, really it just shows you. And then the Apple One, which I've been a subscriber since its inception, um, to have it all. So, you know, we got, mm -hmm. we got all this great stuff now. So, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have it. I don't, I think, I think Kelly, you're, you were still debating, you're going just individual services, but. Uh, yeah, um, because Fitness Plus, uh, because I care about Fitness Plus and I don't care about News Plus and that's so uh, yeah. trying to run the numbers on that and figure out um, what to do with it. The I will say that the thing I thought was notable in this press release was not uh, go us, uh, which was kind of the vibe here, but um, Eddie Q saying last week marked my 34th anniversary at Apple. And that means he joined in like 1989. And yep. think about the company Apple was in 1989 and think about yep. the company apple is now and i mm -hmm. also uh and i also liked uh the the calling out of like the caliber of content that is available on apple's various services um i don't know if you have it in the show notes i didn't get all the way to the bottom to look but uh fitness plus literally this week debuted uh, kickboxing workouts yep. and I love kickboxing. And so I was very, very excited to have like a, a whole new kind of workout in the app, um, especially one that doesn't involve any equipment. You don't have to use anything extra in order to do it. And um, uh, like reminding people that, you know, for at least another couple of months, the current best picture winner at the Oscars is a is a movie that you can only watch on Apple TV Plus and back to back best comedy winners for Ted Lasso, uh, my favorite TV show. And uh, like seeing, like having them point out like some of the the level of of the stuff that they're competing with. Um, and now that we've been talking about their media presence for more than 10 seconds, we have to say hi, Charlotte, over at the edition <laughs> and uh, say hello to her. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, she. I'm, I'm under a legal agreement. I have to do that if it's been 10 seconds of Apple is media company. Hi, Charlotte. You should go check her out at the edition .net. Um, And, but like, I was just, when I saw that he'd been there for 34 years, like I just, it, you know, it has kind of felt like he's been there forever. And yeah. even people at this point who are longtime Apple watchers, he's been there longer than they've, than a lot of those folks have been paying attention. So I was just kind of thinking about um, like the fundamental change in, every single aspect of his job from when he started until now and you know how uh, it's it's kind of impressive to think about that much evolution and that amount of time right and uh and to check in the chat that says uh apple recently added apple music to the tussle i don't think more tussle added apple music to the tussle uh but it, it, it's flawless and he's very happy and they're very happy so um nice good yeah. to good to hear finally that tesla can tesla owners can listen to apple music so I was in, in a Tesla. I, I think I rode in five Teslas and Uber when I was in CES. So, and, and when when one of the drivers talked about, oh yeah, I have have you have music on here now as we were talking. So I saw it right on the screen. So it was great. That's awesome. Uh, next story here: the uh, Apple TV users are complaining about TVOS 16.2 Watch Now redesigned. Apple TV users are not happy with the design changes that Apple added to the Apple TV app with the launch of 16.2, iPad OS 16.2, and Mac OS 13.1, Adventure 13.1, according to a number of complaints it's over on Reddit. Uh, people are absolutely hating the new format, uh, and they roll right into previews with audio. What the heck, Apple? Up next is tiny and now easily skipped over on purpose. So <clears throat> I guess you can't please everybody. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I, I think they'll probably take a lot of this feedback and who knows, they might, uh, might make some changes. Uh, what do you think, Kelly? I hope they do because it's a usability issue at this point. Uh, like, and, and this is the complaint I have about, um, a lot of things when Apple changes stuff It's not that Apple's changing anything. It's not that Apple's, it's not that they're trying something new or different in order to improve something. It's that, um, there's no option if I have some sort of, uh, need or want to do it a different way, 
um, you know, one of the things that they have used forever to pitch people on using the TV app is that you can hook it to everything else except Netflix. And right. then all you have to do on your TV is go to the TV app and let us take care of the rest of it for you. And that's not, and, and if you're going to take the up next away and make the up next hard and make, make it a, a rougher experience for me to pick up where I left off, then that's not, especially if it's not for an understandable reason, like, I don't get why this is what they're doing. Like, we, you know, to go back to fitness plus for a second, I understand why they want all of the what's new at the top and the things that I've added to my personal library to be down at the bottom. And it's so that I see stuff in between. And I get that. I'm not super happy about it, but I understand why they did it. And I don't understand why you would force sound on people and why you would make it harder for people to spend more time in the app that you want them to use. Yep. I agree. Anything bad? Uh, Apple failed with this redesign. This this is an instance where Apple is is not paying attention to user needs and instead yep. is focusing on uh, on their own commercial needs in a very overt way. And of course, everything Apple does is about their commercial needs because it's a company and the, their job is to make money. Right. Um, but what they're doing here, it, it's happening in the wrong way because mm -hmm. they've taken a user experience and uh, and really degraded it. And I'm, I'm with the people that are upset about this because it's a pain. Um, I, I'm not uh, uh, pitchforks and uh, burning torches angry today um but i reserve the right to change my mind at, at any time and get like <laughs> really furious it's just it's just an annoying <laughs> unnecessary change yeah yep absolutely yeah. um next story here uh, apple is going to be uh, raising the price of the out of warranty iphone mac and ipad battery replacement starting this coming march Apple is increasing the price of out-of-warranty battery replacements for all iPhone models older than the iPhone 14 later this year. The company did announce this on their website, and it's also going to increase the prices of the iPad and Mac uh, battery replacements. So starting in March 1st in 2023, the price of out-of-warranty battery replacements for all models of the 13 and the 4, 12 series of iPhone, as well as anything older, will increase by $20. Ooh. <gasps> $69 for battery replacements. Um, Prior to that, so it's going to go up to eighty nine dollars. Um, of course, uh, if you have Apple Care or Apple Care Plus, uh, you don't pay anything for a battery replacement once the battery health has decreased past eighty percent. You know that's always been a debate, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, they're going to increase it by thirty dollars for MacBook Pros and for uh, iPads. So, uh, so they're really uh, hitting it with the battery uh, increases here, guys. I think it's like ninety nine dollars replacing an iPhone fourteen. So I mean not. I yeah, I think so. Ne needing to do that too often. Uh, yeah, the uh, the pricing. It uh, assume that uh, if you're not doing Apple Care, you're spending a hundred bucks to replace a battery in basically yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So this uh, ten inch iPad Pro that I love, I need to get a new battery in it before March. Yep. <laughs> So you say, long, hey, lady, <laughs> remind me, <laughs> remind me on Friday. Yeah. 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 I, I should use my technology to my advantage. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so get, get, if you need a battery replace, do it before March. It's going to be yep. important. Um, there's been so many crazy rumors this uh, over this holiday. Um, and I just was like getting so kind of sick of already talking about the iPhone 15 is coming and doing this, and the iPhone 16 is going to do this. And, uh, you know, I just, it just gets a point to do, do we really, um, um, do, do, do we really need to have uh, these rumors? And they just, sometimes I just don't even want to report them. But the, this one I kind of can kind of believe. This was uh, Apple had reported planning no major updates for Air, AirPods, uh, Apple Watch, iPad, or Apple TV in 2023. Apple is, is planning no major upgrades to all those devices uh, or the Apple Watch in 2023. This was according to uh, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, which you can trust. He's pretty reliable of, of his information. And then the AR and VR headsets, they're saying now that's going to be and have an imminent launch in 2023. I saw, you know, quite a bit of the VR, AR, VR headsets. So 
out of TES. So uh, this is a big hot thing right now, but which is surprising. They ain't even going to think about the AirPods Max, which haven't been touched in many years. Um, that they haven't really uh, ever like 1.0 then, came out, and that's still what it is, right? And we never got a revision, did we? No, didn't. And can re- rule out a yeah. possibility of this is coming out. So. It's kind of sad, and the same thing was going on with with Max. I mean, the MacBook Pros. We were thinking that there was going to be an M2, and that hasn't happened. So it's interesting to see that the hardware has kind of been in a stall uh, mm-hmm. as of late. Don't you think, Kel? Uh, I'm. I I liked. I sound very much like like a a, a crabby old person on this because every time we talk <laughs> about something, I'm like, I liked it the old way. Um, <laughs> I liked when we had uh, what I used to call, I think, I think Jeff, we talked about this over on the Two Out Talk cast, the, the evolution track and the revolution track. So you get like yeah. the new number, um, you know, uh, a lot of people call it like the TikTok of the product line. So you would get the four, the iPhone four, and then the four S, and then you would get the five and right. the five S. So you would get like maybe a new, maybe like fundamentally new things. And then you would get the next year, you'd get the refinement of those things. And I liked that because it made it, you could kind of, even if you didn't know what to expect, you knew what to expect, which sounds kind of odd, but um, you knew like the next one was going to be a big change. And then the next one was going to be like, you know, what if, you know, like snow leopard mountain lion, but for hardware, you know, we're going to take what we gave you last year and we're going to turn, turn it up a notch on all of those things. And then we're going to go back and, and work on something that's like massively different later. And that was super cool. And I really liked having that sort of, you know, what's the S what's the S track going to be for, uh, for hardware, you know, and, um, and I liked when, uh, when some of that was a little more obvious. Uh, I was really excited uh, for Apple Silicon, mostly because I wanted to know what was gonna happen when Apple got to innovate everything at their own pace and they weren't beholden to literally any other company or their development or their manufacturing process in order to to make the machines that they wanted to make. And I thought, you know, great, like, you know, th- the cuffs are off, like they're gonna just go to town. It's gonna be amazing. And we're gonna get new machines, you know, new, new, computers the same way we get new pocket computers you know they're going to give us a new one every year it's gonna be awesome um you know maybe they'll also start coming in colors that don't match any of the colors of any of the other products uh you know not that that irritates me to no end or anything i promise um but i i I really wanted to see like i there should be an m2 pro there should be an m2 macbook pro by now there should be a mac pro by now um i have no idea how this is what's, this is where we are, but this is where we are. So I don't know, uh, I don't know what it is. And I, I wish that I could chalk it up to something like, oh, it's a supply chain problem or, you know, anything yeah. like that, but there's no, there's, there's none of that going on. So no, I don't know what to, caught up on yeah. if anything that the, the companies who are selling the products can't catch up because there's so many, so much backlog. <laughs> yeah. So you have thoughts, Jeff. I have thoughts. Yes. Um, I I think that the disappointment that a lot of people will feel throughout 2023, assuming this report is correct, it, it's reasonable for them to be disappointed because, yep. because people want new stuff. At the same time, my guess is that uh, the reason we're not seeing uh, or won't see um, a, a major refresh for AirPods or AirPods Max is because of what Apple is doing with chip development. Um, I think the yeah. next step for for their in-ear and over-ear headphone products is going to be to uh, to uh, design a chip that allows them to do um, uh, the the lossless high-res audio wirelessly to their own headphones and how that will work because uh, well i'm assuming that would be something separate from bluetooth because you need bluetooth so you just have your your full compatibility but then you do something else so that you can have the high-res audio so i think apple's working on something along those lines and that's not going to be done in time for uh for product refreshes this year Apple Watch, 
I don't think we need a new Apple Watch every year. And yeah. I know it's a hot take that a lot of people <laughs> don't like, but yeah, well, I don't think we need a new Apple Watch every year. And we and we just got the Ultra and we we did get some new features in the eight. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so maybe there's like a, a minor uh, performance improvement, longer battery life, something like that, but but nothing like really significant. All right, hold your thought, Kelly, because I'm going to wrap up so that you can explode. Um, how can we not have had a major redesign of Apple TV yet? At yeah. this at this point, we should have had something new and compelling. We don't have anything compelling enough for me to replace my Apple TV HD. I still don't have a 4K. Yeah. Yeah. So two, two things. Um, first, Jeff, because you know the ins and outs of the, the digital audio and, and all that, um, this question is specifically for you. Do you think that maybe AirPlay is how they can make that happen if you use AirPlay from the headphones to the device? AirPlay would totally work. That's because AirPlay, you know, at that point you're doing Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of, uh, of bandwidth over Wi-Fi to do that. The trick is how do you do it without trashing the battery life? And yeah. uh, so that, that might be what they're working on with the, with the chips. Yeah. And with the Apple TV, the thing that I have wondered for a long time, and I think you and I may have talked about this on TDO. I know you and I have talked about it and um, odds are good it's on the internet somewhere because <laughs> that's, that's how we roll. Um, we've talked about Apple TV soundbar. Yes, we have. And having that yeah. be a thing and that that would be kind of the next evolution of the Apple TV is that um, it's your home hub and also it makes it so those wimpy little speakers on your 4K TV have a little oomph you know we can we can mm -hmm. give you a little bit nicer sound because like when i look at televisions when i you know like in stores and things like that like almost everything is um in a sound bar you know if you're gonna get a new tv you're gonna need a sound bar or you're gonna need a center mm -hmm. channel if that's how you roll you're gonna need you know you need a separate audio system because the audio system that the tv comes with like is literally a box check. You know, we can't sell it to you if it doesn't make, if it has no sound whatsoever. So we've given you like the barest of minimums because you know, the TV's an inch thick or whatever. And so that kind of like, that's what makes, I keep leaning toward that, especially with um, spatial audio because Apple made such a massive, massive deal about spatial audio and head tracking you know, like if I'm wearing my AirPods and I'm listening to something on any of my Apple devices and I turn my head, it's like I'm listening to it come from the television, which is yep. still a thing that is very weird when it happens and I forget about. But um, uh, I, I, I wonder if that's going to be where the Apple TV goes. And I don't blame you, by the way, for not buying one. I'm grumpy at both of my Apple TV 4Ks right now um, for, for actually for all the same reasons. Um, but the the redesign, like the fact that there hasn't been iteration in some of these product lines is also very surprising to me. Like, yeah. you know, it, we've gotten we've gotten iteration after iteration on the phones. We got the satellite stuff on the watch, uh, you know, those kinds of the, the car crash detection and those sorts of things in the new phones and the new wearables. But we don't have, uh, you know, there is no airpods max 2 there's no uh apple tv 4k 2023 kind of a thing you know and and i find that really sort of confusing yeah because it's not like i don't want to give them more money i just need it to be worth my time and right now it's really not right all right um last story uh another press release was that uh, was uh, out this week apple maps now allows businesses to customize their listings a free business connect tool that was announced today by Apple this week allows businesses to customize their location in the maps app with a brand logo images and other key information, such as special promotions, seasonal menu items at a restaurant. Uh, and then businesses can also highlight various ad actions such as ordering groceries through Instacart, making a reservation at open table, booking hotel, booking.com and more. Um, 
Apple says these new capabilities, these new capabilities are, are going to be available to businesses in the U S starting this week. And that will be available to businesses globally in the coming months, which is going to take some time for the businesses to update their information. So basically you set up a business connect uh, account with your, your new or existing Apple ID and Apple has verified it, then verified the business. Then you can claim their location and begin updating it. It's kind of cool. You, you know, you got the call, the order, the reserve, I mean, if it's tickets, there's a tickets button. What's the driving distance to that particular location? Their website, the chat, menu, show times. And I mean, this looks like this is a really good way of getting information about a business location before you use the maps to go get the directions to go there to pick up or, or, or connect to whatever product they're offering. I think this is good. Don't you think, Jeff? This is good, but I'm having a hard time praising Apple for doing this because uh, uh, there's a reason why if you are searching for a business, you search Google Maps yep. and then uh, and then maybe you'll use Apple Maps for the directions, but you got to go to Google Maps to find it. And that's because Apple has not made the process of inputting businesses and updating the content for your businesses easy like Google has done. So this is a very welcome addition and uh, and will make maps more useful now step it up apple and go all the way on this yeah link it not where i thought you were headed because where i was headed was um uh i can't praise apple for this because it took them until 2023 to figure it out and maybe it's just because <laughs> yeah. they don't want to pay yelp anymore for that system level integration that you can get now um so yeah like i'm i Somehow I thought that this had already been a thing. And so I was sort of surprised to see the headline about it because I thought you already could do this. But um, uh, I feel like they just don't want to license Yelp anymore because you can, like a lot of places, at least here anyway, when you look something up, uh, you know, it'll give you directions and stuff. But if you scroll down a little, it'll say like more information on Yelp. Uh, you know, it'll show you like their hours and their location and then anything else you need, you have to go to Yelp to get it. So I just figured... Um, uh, maybe that license renewal was coming up or something and Apple doesn't want to do it anymore. And so they figured out, you know, well, what if we let people update their stuff on Apple Maps instead of having to do it in Yelp so that the information is yeah. accurate. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's about time and it really uh, should have happened way before now. Uh, but yeah, but Jeff, I agree with you. Like, uh, you know, the the point of doing it in Google Maps is so that you can get the information from there. Because uh, there is no way to do it on the Apple side, which is ridiculous. It's stupid. Uh, Kelly, right. um, I have uh, uh, a new theory for your crackpot house. Yes. Apple can't stop licensing Yelp. They they are uh, bound at the hip, essentially, because Apple needs to have ratings for businesses. Mm -hmm. And no one is going to do that in maps because Apple has never created a system that makes uh, makes business searching as valuable there as it is um, in Yelp. Google Maps. Yeah. But everyone uses Yelp. So mm -hmm. if Apple wants to have that sort of detail about businesses, they can do all the stuff that they want to do and they'll still have to license Yelp. Yeah, because yep. it's either that or write a check to Google, and we know that's not happening. No, Google's right. writing a check to them. <laughs> uh, all right, so the, yeah, that uh, check out the link in the show notes. There's also a link to the press release that Apple released as well. Um, let's go on to the topics for this week, as we always talk about beta uh, software for iOS and iPadOS uh, 16.3 beta 2 is out. Um, they... Uh, uh, and it's also out for public uh, beta as well that, that came out uh, along with developers. Um, 16.2 has added support for physical security keys, finally, that they can use to be added protection for an Apple ID. Any FIDO certified physical security key can be linked to an Apple ID and used for authentication when logging into a new device, otherwise accessing with an Apple ID. And that's, those security keys do replace the digital verifications codes that uh, Apple has been sending a device when you get Apple ID, which I think is, drives me crazy. Uh, but uh, it, it's good that it's there. But now you have to have two physical keys uh, that are required 
to use the feature. So that's going to be interesting. Dave, um, my favorite authentication, I'm totally interrupting. I'm sorry. My favorite oh, authentication ahead. is when I log into an Apple service on my Mac yeah. and the, and the authentication code pops up on my Mac on my and Mac, I yeah. enter it from my Mac. It's just, <laughs> well, well played yeah. Apple. Well yeah. played. Yeah. Oh, drives yeah. me absolutely crazy. Um, and then uh, in addition to the security keys in beta, they're also uh, going to be um, adding more instruction for transferring music from an iPhone over a, over to a HomePod using handoff. Well, if that works properly, that's another story. I haven't tried it. So, <laughs> uh, so nothing, nothing really uh, earth shattering with the, I haven't noticed anything. I, I've updated both the iPad and the iPhone I have. I don't think you've noticed much either, Jeff, on your iPad. So, um, yeah. The, the only thing that I've noticed different so far is when I go to check the software version that's installed on my iPad and it's a new number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So nothing too exciting with them in, in the, in the beta world. I mean, they went about f- five weeks, I think before between beta one and beta two. So, uh, so that probably just the holiday kind of stalled things a little that's bit. That's my guess. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. So, so, uh, CES, CES happened last week as we record this. It was, uh, I was uh, pleasantly excited and happy to see the crowds again. I mean, yes, we've come out of this pandemic and yes, people were kind of concerned, but well, nobody was wearing a mask. So there was uh, very few of any. Uh, so it, it was just kind of business as usual out there. Um, uh, some of the numbers, uh, I mean, the, the event was from January 5th through January 8th, and then the uh, the press events uh, started uh, two, uh, two days prior to that. So I attended uh, all the uh, the three major uh, events, which was CES Unveiled, uh, which was at Mandalay Bay, and then you have PEPCOM, which was a private media event that, that was at Caesars Palace, and then uh, Showstoppers was at uh, the Bellagio. Needless to say, all three of those locations required a, a ton of walking because they're in ballrooms that were very far away and not like the uh, the Venetian Expo and the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center. So, uh, but uh, there was uh, 3,200 exhibitioner exhi- uh, uh, exhibitors, and there was uh, over 110,000 uh, folks that attended the conference, which is not as big as it had been in the past, but quite a big number considering. People were pretty much not too uh, terribly excited to be there in 2022, or of course, for sure not in 2021. So, mm-hmm. um, so, uh, so. But again, everybody needs to know. You know, it's not. It's a place you just cannot see everything. It's impossible. I mean, you have to be a super person to to be able to even attempt that because it's just the just sheer mass amounts of places to go, and it's spread out from the on the north side of the strip all the way down to the south side of the strip and, and everything in between so uh it was uh it was very interesting i did uh i did get to experience the uh, the vegas loop that uh, the boring company has had uh, had, had uh, created with the tunnels uh, oh, yeah. the, our, our friend our friend elon musk um and i was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to uh, to do it i was staying at resorts world and kind of a side joke because uh, kelly missed it from mac voices on tuesday that uh i did get to witness the uh the adult uh entertainment expo that was uh, <laughs> was was uh, was going on at that at that location of resorts world resorts world is actually a very nice place i was very impressed with that place uh, yeah, but apparently it does... they have a great view yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, i'm sorry bo- i missed in, the story in, in uh, both, boy, in both I yeah in both cases so uh but yeah, they do have a they have a, do have a station for the, the Vegas Loop uh, at the Resorts World, and then and it does have intermittent stops, but all the way through uh, the Las Vegas Convention Center, and you just you take a ride in a Tesla. Don't go very fast, twenty five miles an hour. It's in a tunnel, but uh, I got to go into into the Model X, which is you know the the, the doors that are, have the, the oh, hatch. Yeah. Batwing doors. Door. Mm-hmm. They don't call it that, there. but it's something else. And, Gullwing. and like I said, I Gullwing. took I took quite a few. Yeah, the Boring Company. Uh, I took quite a few Ubers, so then there's mm-hmm. Tesla is abound. So uh, it yeah. was uh, d- definitely uh, interesting. So, um, but I wanted to kind of go through some of the uh, products that stood out for me. And um, I, I have a, a list here. We'll see how, how far we can get through it here. But uh, first off, I'm going to start with OtterBox. OtterBox always makes some great uh, cases, and so they also make great chargers. 
Um, they did announce the upcoming launch of the Otter Grip, which is a symmetric uh, symmetry series case, which is offering MagSafe uh, compatibility along, including a grip that doesn't need to be removed for charging. Um, I think this is very similar to what pop sockets are because pop sockets are just so insanely popular mm -hmm. uh, that uh, oh, this yeah that looks like uh, a fold away like. pop socket yeah so it does fold away I know I know pop sockets has been coming up with some newer designs in fact I didn't see pop sockets at the uh, the show this year I probably missed them but they were I'm sure they were there uh, that this does go this does go flush but then then MagSafe works you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite well with it um, so. Uh, Pricing is going to be around sixty dollars, and they're going to be available in February. So I thought the, those were some cool cases. Um, there was uh, another uh, another thing that everybody was too overly excited about. I don't know why, but of course, they have this thing made by, by a company called uh, Withings. It was all over the press. That, that, that is a there's, a there's something year every reader. year that is the baffling thing from CBS right. that everybody's like, oh, did you see? And I'm like, yeah, yeah the toilet good. paper dog was in 2020, so now now it's the U scan. <laughs> you, you got toilet paper, now you have a urine reader <laughs> that goes in your toilet. Uh, it's just a little miniaturized health lab that attaches to your toilet bowl and collects your urine for home urine screening. Uh, Withing says the urine screening can provide an immediate snapshot of your your body's balance, provide useful monitoring and detecting of a larger variety of health information. I mean, it's kind of like a small little puck that clips to the to the toilet, and uh, and I guess there's cartridges that come out and you could they last three months, and you have to ew go in there and swap take the cartridge out, and uh, uh, so it's checking all kinds of different things. Uh, uh, Nutri balance cycle uh, for for uh, men menstrual cycle predictions for women, ovulation for women, uh, all kinds of the pH balances and vitamin C, like, you know, everything that you know, would normally do when you're testing, you know, when your doctor tells you to pee in a cup. <laughs> so, uh, and it's not cheap either because it looks like it's uh, it's going to be uh, priced at four hundred and almost five hundred euros for the reader and one cartridge. So that's got to be above three or $400 US. And it, it's not going to be available in the United States just yet because it's still being tested by the FDA. So, you know, another one of those products that everybody gets excited about. And uh, <laughs> yeah, You know, I, the fact that it's going through FDA testing yeah. gets me kind of excited about this, but not in the hype way, but right. more in the uh, let's use technology in a positive way for people. And uh, there, there has to be enough of a subset of technology users that have some sort of medical condition where they need to be doing uh, various testing all the time and to yep. be able to do something like this in home easily and have all that data, which presumably goes right into health kit, which means right. your doctor has it right away as well. I do see uh, a lot of value in that. However, mm -hmm. It won't stop me from being 12 years old and, uh, and and saying that had I been there and seen this at Showstoppers or wherever, I would have been escorted out when I said, let's <laughs> test it right now, and then did. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm still not allowed to talk about why I don't get to go to CES with Jeff anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, statute of limitations, Kelly. I know. Um Honestly, like the, the takeaway I had from this was, um, hey, a tech company debuted something at CES that could be useful for 100% of the population and not 50% of the population. And that was the part that uh, I found notable because that's the part I always find notable when something like this happens. And it shouldn't be revolutionary that they thought of something that uh, only biologically female people are going to find useful. Uh, but we're still kind of at that point when it comes to stuff at CES. So uh, yeah. I was really glad to see that it it can be useful for for everybody for a variety of things. Uh, so um, this this kind of reminds me of some of the democratizing we've seen with like some of the information the Apple Watch can give you that you can share with your doctor and um, yep. how advances in things like uh, getting to have your health chart on your phone and and the kind of data you can store in the health app and you know medications and things like medication reminders and things that makes it so that you can take a little more control over your own health care and and I'm for all of that for people who have the 
uh, have the opportunity and have the need and and having it available easily to you in a in a reliable enough way that you know it makes it a lot easier to tell if this is a thing where you're going to need medical professional intervention as opposed to just something might be kind of weird and you know maybe it shakes out in a couple of days but maybe you actually need to talk to somebody about it or uh, you know and and it also like helps a lot of people have Kelly, a point conversations point. You said with their doctors shake out I did. That was for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's move on. To another product I saw um, I thought was uh, super cool, actually, is uh, the pen is getting very smart. Uh, this company called NUA, N-U-W-A, uh, showed off this pen, uh, and it's a smart ballpoint with an a- and an app combo. Um, and uh, what it was is it uh, is it just a kind of cool little pen, and it's an actual ballpoint pen, and you you write notes like you normally do, but it also has a camera on it that it scans those notes. So like that the, they were demonstrating using sticky notes, and as you'd write them on sticky notes, it would it would uh, it would transfer uh, to an app on your on your iPhone, uh, and then and you can keep the notes in journals and notebooks and use post-its and all that stuff on that part. And it's uh, it was very interesting to see. This is a Dutch company. Um, and, uh, I, I thought it was just a super cold little device with the camera, uh, I got a link in the show notes, uh, from TechCrunch that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, showed it here. And, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it is, uh, still in testing phases. It isn't out yet. Um, but, uh, I thought interesting you, you being the, the pen aficionado that you are, Jeff, they're, they're going to be, uh, isn't not going to be selling its own cartridges. They're going to be opting for any support. Uh, supporting an industry standard D1 ink cartridges. So you can pick up a, you know, a pack of four of them for 12 bucks and uh, you know, you can pick those up easily. Um, and uh, it does have subscriptions. So, so if you want to, uh, 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 if you want to use the pen plus a monthly subscription, that's going to be available as well. Uh, it's going to be released uh, in the U S like around August of 2023 for about $279. And it can be pre-ordered uh, this, this week uh, for 179. So, Got two, two colors, black or ivory. I thought this was. I thought this was cool. It's something you'd you'd like to take a look at, Jeff. I would like to take a look at it. And Dave, it's okay. I mean, I appreciate that you said pen aficionado. It's yeah. okay for you to say I have a pen fetish. Okay. Um. <laughs> so what they're doing with this pen, setting it up so you use uh, standard cartridges instead of a special thing. Okay. Uh, it looks like you can write on any paper. You don't have to have this spe- a special book with, with grid dots or whatever on okay. it. Uh, this is all stuff that's great. Now, for me to, to get like inappropriately excited for this, they need to fix these designs. So it's like a regular pen. I mean, when you look at it, um, it's 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 a special uh, pen it's when you look at it it's not a pen it's not a pen and it has this big fat bulb at the end where the where the pen tip is um when you can make one of these pens so that it's like a regular pen like um uh, you know like right here oh what a surprise i have a, a nice pen sitting on my yeah. desk right now um when it can be like this, then I will start getting super excited. Um, until then, I will be, yeah, see, a pen. Um, I will be Cut excited about stuff like this because we're getting closer to that point where it can just look like a pen and, and function like a pen until you need it to be more than a pen, and then it is. Mm-hmm. Um but as it stands right now, these are really cool products using really cool technology where you have to make um, uh, sacrifices in comfort and usability for the features. Mm-hmm. Yep. I still want to try one really bad. Oh, yeah, me too. It, for the record, super this cool. is an actual pen. I just want to make sure, like, this yeah. isn't just sort of me being funny. This is just an actual, honest to God, R2D2 fountain pen. Um, The one question I have that I think uh, 100% of this panel is interested in is, does it work if you're left-handed? I'm left-handed as well as you are, Kelly. And yes, it did. I I tried it and uh, it uh, didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are, 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 are all three, yes. That's right. All three of us. Yes. One hundred percent of the panel needs to know. Yes. Because 100%. that's the kind of thing that somebody yeah. would would not think about and and go. Well, I mean, if you look oh, at the well, shape of it, right? In that you picture, you can only hold it one way, and when you hold it with your left hand, you're covering up the camera, you know, or whatever. No, because so. the camera's at the tip, so it. it yeah. It, yeah. It it, it. it was. It was comfortable. It's. A, it okay. is, I agree with you. It was kind of a kind of a strange design, and um, it's uh, something that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how how it, it, it was very. I mean, there was a lot of people looking at it. It was uh, the, the, these guys were actually at Pepcom, so, um, uh, so it was uh, definitely will, an interesting. I will say it's not dramatically weird for a pen, but it's definitely like that's a there's there's something specific about that particular pen that you know if if I just saw somebody writing with that in the world like. That's a pen that is serving some sort of purpose. It's orthopedic or it's got some sort of special situation that is what it's for. And, you know, it turns out that's the case. But yeah, when you can just make a plain old pen, you know, it just looks like I'm pulling a Lamy Safari out of my backpack. Then, you know, that's that's the point where I think uh, the I think that'll be the tipping point as far as adoption is like it doesn't look like I'm using some sort of big weird pen for something. Yeah. 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 So um one of the, one I wanted to touch on one charging device and then a uh, and then a backpack I found here uh, Skosh which we I think makes some pretty awesome products. They do. Uh, ca- they do. they came I out with this new. Them. Yeah, me too. I have the the the, the I have the, the whole power bank device that you know lay flat and you know, it, it assembles different modules. Uh, yeah, this one's called the perfect. MagSafe uh, GoBat MS Five K. It's a, a wireless charging power bank that is uh, is it is MagSafe, so it attaches right to your iPhone. It also has a USB C port on it, mm-hmm. uh, and um, it is it's a five thousand uh, milliamp uh, battery pack, so it gives you some pretty good charging capabilities. Not very expensive, like around fifty five dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, it is available now, and it comes in black or a white color. Um, but uh, I thought this was real cool. The I have a link to the. Scotch website here in the show notes, um, and it uh, you know it, it attaches nicely to the iPhone. It's not too terribly big uh, for mm-hmm. someone who wants to have a you know a little extra power, but also being able to carry it to to plug in other things with the USB C. Um, mm-hmm. And you also can charge your your AirPods with it because it's because uh, it's MagSafe, and as well as you, if you wanted to you know use a uh, Lightning to USB C, you could. A uh, mm-hmm. cool little device. I like it. Cool. Yeah. They they always make like I've been a, a massive Scosche fan for years. Full disclosure, they've never sponsored anything. They have occasionally sent me review gear, um, but I've purchased a fair amount of Scosche stuff as well because uh, it's always really solid. It's always nicely priced, and mm-hmm. it always feels like it was designed by somebody that actually that has actually used whatever it is. Like somebody has actually tried to use other. MagSafe batteries on the back of their phone and sat down and designed this coming from that. Like I've put miles on all these other ones and here's how we're going to make ours better. Or, um, you know, like, uh, the one I have on my desk, this is a 10 K, uh, go bat model from Skosh. And it's got the little, um, indicator lights on the front. It's got a out one, a out on one side and then C in and out on the other charges really fast super duper reliable. I wish it did have MagSafe. Um, that's why I was really excited to see this in the show notes was because now I can get one of those, which will probably also do all the same stuff that this does, which I really like. Um, so I, I appreciate their, um, their, uh, approach to everything. And, and, you know, like I have 10 year old lightning retractable lightning cables from them that still, that still work. I have retractable 30 pin iPod cable for my iPod from them <laughs> that I still use. Um, yeah, because it's, stuff. yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And, and I, I can't say enough nice things about them, especially, um, and this is a separate podcast, but I've had to break up with anchor for a bunch of reasons. And so knowing that there's still someplace I can go to reliably get nicely priced, uh, gear yeah. as I, you know, gear to go with my gear, uh, it's it's really nice to have Scotia around for that. So I, I ordered one. I thought it was a nice nice little addition to have that. I never haven't had a uh, MagSafe battery, and I think a lot cheaper and probably more reliable than Apple's one that they have. So um, yeah, everything's going to be cheaper than whatever you're getting. Yeah, <laughs> whatever exactly. you can get from Apple. Yeah. So hi Chris, the PR guy at Scotia that that uh, occasionally emails me about things. Um, so yeah, I um 
I, I'm always excited to see what they come out with, especially because they, they usually do a number of things at CES. So I'm always looking yep. forward to, to mm -hmm. what they've got there. So yeah, it's great. Absolutely. Uh, this product actually has not been released just yet. This is, and actually it won uh, the Innovation Award from CES and Henri. It's called the Hyper Pack Pro, made by Hyper. You know, Hyper's known for making uh, battery chargers and uh, connectors, all that kind of fun stuff. But they came up with this uh, new backpack. And what's notable about this backpack, it has built-in Find My. There is a built-in Find My module mm -hmm. that's mounted uh, at the top of the backpack. Um, and uh, you can you can definitely set it up um, uh, so you don't need to have an air tag in order to do this. Uh, it has you know very generous packs. It does have the uh, built-in luggage pass-through. It uh, also has nice. uh, it also has a compartment where you can put a, a battery pack inside the backpack and it not be floating around. It's got a nice place that holds it in place, and you can feed the cables through two of the sections of the of the backpack, um, and and uh, has a, a good simple quick access backpack for like your passport and wallet and such. Um, it has a, a, an RFID uh, pouch that you can put, you can protect your, uh, your, your credit cards and such That's from RFID uh, exposure. Um, and uh, it's got nice side pockets. It'll fit a 16 inch, up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro as a water bottle uh, holder. Uh, and uh, it's a nice little backpack. Um, it was, mm -hmm. it was on Indiegogo um, and there's, there's still a, uh, early bird specialty you could actually uh, support them if you want they've already made their goal that they wanted and it looks like this is going to be something released and i gave in and bought it <laughs> so uh Ooh. and uh, they, they were they were they were showing it off at ces uh, so it's a uh, if you go to the Indi indiegogo uh, site you could get 40 percent off as an early bird for 120 dollars. Wow. it's going to be priced at 200 dollars. um but i think it's a nice backpack really it uh, it seems like it's uh something that's uh I would I might use more full time than the one I've had I've had uh, I've had my backpack for years so um, yeah. you're seeing more innovations like that especially with uh, the fact that it'll include something like Find My which I think is cool. Very I think this cool. is the first bag I've seen that the first bag I've seen that has the the Find My built in like that. I don't think mm -hmm. I can't I think of another either. one off the top of my head that that would have that um you know, built in as opposed to like, you know, there's a secret pocket in the back of my backpack and I drop an air tag in it and now I can find it, you know? <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, not having to have, to, not having to DIY it, um, is nice. And, and hyper is another one of those companies that makes a lot of, of really solid, reliable, uh, mm -hmm. gear, gear for my gear, as I like to say. And, um, this looks like a really nice backpack. It looks I mean, it, it doesn't look it in the in the pictures or anything, but since it will hold a 16 inch laptop, I know it's it's going to be a little bigger than um, my it, well, it's I not going to be bigger was... than than I need, but it's definitely because um, if I have more bag, I will just put more stuff in it, and so I try Nature to make sure that a vacuum. I... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think it's 22. I think it was rated 22 cubic inch. Uh, 22 capacity. 22 liters. Liters. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my current backpack is 19. I have a Tombin Synapse 19 and, yep. um, I pink puffy heart that bag so much. Um, it's the best bag. Um, but this is me. I'm taking a good long look at this backpack cause I love my Tombin, but this looks, yep. this looks really, really nifty. And it, um, and yeah, I, I shouldn't be allowed to have that much space because I fit 22 liters of stuff into my Synapse 19. <laughs> but, there you go. Um, so I, I shouldn't be allowed, but, uh, it does look really good. And I, I like, um, I also don't see a lot of, uh, charging capable sorts of bags either, even still, right. um, you know, given the number of people that I see out in the world, you know, walking around with a cable from their phone to their bag or whatever, like having that yep. be elegantly solved is still not something that I'm seeing in a lot of gear. And I don't. Again, this is a baffling decision that I don't understand why more people is. don't do. Uh, you know, like the like the phone, like having a nice soft pocket in a bag for a phone. Uh, you know, most of them don't have one, or if they do, right. it's for a flip phone, um, and that is again a, a ludicrous decision. So, um, yeah, this is a this is a pretty good looking bag. Well, you will let, you will hear my review, assuming I, I receive it because I did support <laughs> I look them. Forward but, to your review, yeah, yeah, because uh, it, it looked too cool to pass up so we're gonna check it that out and, it does and hyper's 
Hyper's a reliable Indiegogo to back. Like they just sort of use it as a pre-order yeah. system. Oh yeah, Hyper's I mean, now. I, so yeah, you're. They it's were there not with like, other stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're a reliable company. Yeah, they were there. Yeah, they were other stuff. But uh, yeah, they're going to be more other other things. I, I, you know, again, God, there's just so much stuff. Uh, <laughs> and and um, yeah, uh, and um, I will be getting some samples from Kensington. I'm going to talk about some of their docs. So you'll okay. hear about that uh, next week. Uh, so I'm going to save it, save that for next week's show. Uh, cool. And and uh, we'll, we'll we'll check that out. So um, lastly, I know I know Jeff, you've been talking a lot about weather app since the the, the demise of Dark Sky, but I, I really wanted to to uh, talk about this a little bit because it's been quite the dilemma. Which 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 weather app do we really want to go with? Um, and I know you you made your decision. Um, we're gonna link in the show notes here from uh, Mac Rumors about what are the top five weather apps that are out there. You've you've uh, twisted my arm and I've decided to subscribe. So uh, if you could kind of tell the listeners uh, which one you decided to go with after Dark Skies uh, leaving us uh, and uh, how, how you're liking it so far. I went with Carrot Weather. And uh, the reason I went with Carrot Weather over Weather Underground, there, there were two main reasons. Uh, three reasons. And a maniacal devotion to the Pope. No, uh, two reasons. Come the in fr- again. Yeah, I'll come in again. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. So first, Weather Underground does not have its own Apple Watch complication. So that that just took it out of the running, which is unfortunate because it's a really great app. It is. And and then the uh, the second thing was that uh, the developer of Carrot Weather saw the opportunity and took advantage of it in a totally good way. And you know how you can do custom uh, interfaces for Carrot Weather. He made one that's basically dark sky. So, yes. So I have uh, uh, on my iPhone uh, an interface that is uh, almost exactly dark sky. Like it looks so dark sky that you might question if dark sky did a a reskinning of their interface just to spruce it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But no, it's it's carrot weather. did you have to download that? Uh, or did, did, does it no, that's part? all built in. Um, now, I can't remember if that's part of the premium package or not, but like the, the other things that I wanted, ha- having the, the weather radar and stuff built right into the interface all the time, mm-hmm. uh, th- that's the kind of stuff that required um, uh, a subscription, which I, I'm happy to pay because I know part of what I'm paying goes to uh, to pay for the data that the developer is feeding into the app for me, which right. brings me to the third reason why I went with Carrot Weather, and that's because you can set which weather source you want to use. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that a- that was it, trifecta, and it turns out that uh, after I installed the uh, the current version and was poking around the interface and got to where the awards are. I, I already had a badge for being an OG Carrot user. I had forgotten when it first came out. I bought Carrot, and uh, and then I'm guessing shortly <laughs> after that, I switched to Dark Sky because it came out. But uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I had, Carrot for, I had <laughs> Carrot for a while too, and I, and I did offer a free version of it. So mm-hmm. uh, to get, and to have this data, so it... Uh, as, as I went in and looking at the, the di- different subscriptions, there are some legacy c- subscriptions I have access to, I think, because I was a, a legacy customer. So I think they're giving you the better deal. But it looks okay. like the ultra, that ultra plan for $30 a year, which is really not that bad, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that's that's but, what I did. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that you get everything. And I see all the, I mean, I see, even see Dark Sky as a data source, but I think that's going to probably disappear from what I read. Uh, yeah soon yes that that's part of the the whole thing and i need to do some more research because it sounds like but i'm not certain that the reason dark sky is disappearing is because apple is just rolling that data source under the apple brand so it'll still be dark sky data Mm -hmm. but you'll be choosing apple as the source apple weather which they have in their kid or something yeah 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 because that's a choice in there too but they have accuweather and some of these other ones I haven't even heard of before um, that that's in there. Some um, some of the others are um, uh, specifically local user uh, feed only, whereas Dark Sky did that and it had other sources going in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if, if 
if you know there's a bunch of people around you that have good weather, personal weather stations, and they're feeding into one of these services, yep. and you need the data for right where you are, one of those others could be a better choice. So you have to do some research based on your use case to figure out which source is actually best for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus you have, they do use weather stations. If you own a weather station that's set up in your home, looks like you can do that as well as I you think can you feed can that do, in. Yep. And feed it into a public station. There's two different public station choices. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I didn't realize how, how insanely advanced this is. Uh, uh, Compared to what dark. Yeah, every, everyone thought it was just the thing that told you what the temperature was, and then and called, called you a meat, meat sack. A meat sack, right? <laughs> yeah, I. The thing I love most about carrot weather is the the attitude, um, the sass of, of uh, getting the weather, um, but also the the timeliness. Like uh, I found out Michelle Nichols passed away by checking the weather and seeing R.I.P. Uhura as the status update of the weather. It was was very sad but i'm glad that it was you know carrot weather that told me Wait, um michelle nichols died yeah i knew i knew <laughs> i'm like jeff um i'm sorry uh the other thing that's really cool about carrot weather is that it has smart layouts so if you spend a little bit of time in the app you can have it give you different information based on certain conditions like if it's raining maybe that's the only time you care about the radar right or whatever and so you can have it tell you can have it customized um you know like different dashboards for different sorts of weather conditions so that was the thing i really liked about it like i don't care about the air quality um like if it's raining because generally if it's raining the air quality here isn't very bad so i only need to worry about that if it's over a certain temperature because when it's over a certain temperature i know we have an inversion um i am one of those people because i was so distraught over having lost dark sky as a weather source that i just hauled off and went and bought a different bought a weather station so um i have a tempest weather a tempest oh, weather system that's really nice. from weather flow and uh we got it mounted and um because i had to redo my network recently um in a very deeply on brand decision uh my new uh network router is called wan solo and the access point hooked <laughs> to it, because the access point i hooked to it is lando calrissian and uh so of course when i took this big weird roundy black and white shaped um hunk of technology and went and mounted it in the backyard to watch if it was going to rain or not i had to call it stormtrooper uh so <laughs> yeah um uh don't tell mr kelly that i have renamed the garage door in the myq app to be the blast door uh but it's the blast door now uh Excellent. and you can ask the lady to open and close the blast door for you um so yeah i got a tempest weather system and and hooked it up uh with uh public data and the thing that i really liked about tempest is that it gives me the option to have two sets of information so i can have the public data which is um not the exact location of my house and not the exact and and uh, not my exact where i live you know latitude and longitude so um uh and also uh, you know and i can have that public web page that anybody that wants to can go see what the weather is literally in my backyard um but then i can have my own you know but i can set it up for my own access with exactly what the information needs to be so um, that's the thing that I um, have appreciated. And there will be a link to that in the show notes because I've pasted it into the show notes. Um, and the app for it is really nice. And also um, with Carrot, again, I do have a paid subscription. And so um, I can point Carrot at that as well if I just want exactly what uh, the weather is in my backyard and don't care about the rest of it. Um, I do have it hooked up. I hooked it up to Weather Underground, I think it was. Um, That's the one to hook it up to. So, yeah. Um, actually, I think I found out about them because I went to look for a weather system that I could contribute weather data to, um, like something like Weather Underground, uh, mostly because uh, where I live is kind of between two places where they report weather from regularly here in Portland. So it's never quite what one of them is and it's never quite what the other one is and so i have to sort of 
triangulate based on what information they're giving me from two different places that are not near me. So um, I'm also just sort of looking forward to not having to do that anymore and being able to tell, yeah. yes, where I live, here's what's up, you know? Um, so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's been, it, it was a piece of the cake to set it up and was, and it has so far been really easy to use. So um, I was glad to see it. So. Yep. Then um, to, just to wrap up uh, the, the article just talks about some of the other app um, weather apps out there. Apple weather is a good app. If you don't want anything crazy uh, custom customizations like carrot does some, um, so you get that for free. There's no, no charge for that at all. Um, you have AccuWeather, which I find to be kind of clunky. I've never was been a big excited about that with them. Uh, the Weather Channel is it's just a bloatware, honestly. I guess you know, you pay a pretty good premium for getting rid of all that, but uh, you know, but the Weather Channel's been around for a long time. And uh, the NOAA radar and weather forecast, you know, it, it not not the too too terribly exciting with that app either. But they do have in-app purchases you could do as well. Um, so, but uh, I. I I said, uh, Jeff, you talked me into it, so I'm becoming a weather a carrot user now. I mean, again, I mean, I, I had it like I said uh-uh. years ago, and now, now I'm going to do premium. It's worth. I it. think I talked Jeff into getting it in the first place. So <laughs> you yeah. probably did, and uh, and here we are. We've come full circle, and now all three of us are are using it. <laughs> yep. I, well, and I and the thing is, like, you don't have to customize it if you don't want to. Like, if it's you know, um, but you do have options for like. Um, I have a home screen widget for it, um, aside from the complication on my watch, because if I have my phone in my hand, maybe I need to know the weather there too, so I can just glance at it. Right. Um, and I really like, uh, and you can adjust the amount of attitude it gives you. So if you are not a person who likes snark with your weather, um, that's fine. Um, if you're not, why you're listening to this show is a very separate conversation that we probably ought to have with somebody. <laughs> but um, but you, it can be, you know, just plain, you can have like, you know, no attitude, you can have it on overkill like I do, um, you know, which includes the occasional bad word, which always kind of pleases me because I sometimes, I live in the Pacific Northwest, I frequently have bad words to apply to the weather. So uh, I'm always yep. happy to have it. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, wrap over this week. It was a great show. Appreciate uh, everybody listening. We had a great, great time here. So uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show by buying me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee. We'd really appreciate it. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash InTouchWithIOS. We have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we're live streaming, which is on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash in touch with iOS. Thanks to everybody who was in the chat uh, t- tonight and uh, interacting with us and during the show live. That's where you can also watch and listen to the shows and past shows. Uh, go ahead and visit the In Touch with iOS magazine on Flipboard, where many of the topics we discussed are flipped into that magazine. Our link is in the show notes. You can subscribe to the show by going to your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Casts, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, and many others. But just go to our your website, InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65, as well as in touch with iOS and uh, Macedon. I'm on Macedon.cloud at, at DaveG65. And uh, Kelly, Kumat, thank you so much for being here. Let, let people know where you can find you. Thanks so much for having me. I always enjoy getting to come by and chat with you about uh, yeah. Apple News. Um, especially this week, I get to find out some CES stuff that I hadn't actually yeah. seen. So um, you can find me over, you uh, basically cannot find me on Twitter. I mean, you can find me, but I'm not there. Um, I just left my account up so nobody else can use it. And uh, so you want to look for me over on Mastodon. I am verso at mastodon.social. And right, I think that's right. It's not .cloud. Uh, I'm on verso mastodon.social. And um, you can occasionally find me over on the incomparable where I uh, generally talk about Marvel things or Star Wars things, but sometimes other stuff too. And uh, you can also find me on the after show where Mike Rose and I continue to uh, chit chat and crack each other up uh, just like we used to do on the Two Hot Talk cast. And uh, the rest of the time, um, 
yeah, I don't have a lot. I, I, I don't have a ton of other things going on right at the moment. So um, sometimes you can, can find me here. Sometimes Tuesday nights with uh, Chuck Joyner. All right. Thanks so much, Kelly. Jeff Gamma, thanks as always for being here. Where can people find you? It's it's always a pleasure to get to hang out with you. Um, Jay Gamut on the popular socials. So that right now would be Mastodon, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Um, it's still there on Twitter, uh, but I'm watching Mastodon more than Twitter right now. Um, most Tuesdays, Mac Voice is live with Chuck Joyner. Then Thursdays on the big show. And then most Thursday evenings here with you, Dave. And then on Fridays on the Mac show. And uh, then also on the context machine, because Brian Chaffin and I apparently can't get enough of each other. That is true. All right. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, welcome to 2023. We have a lot, a lot of great things ahead for this year and we'll talk again soon. All right, guys. Well, that was fun. A lot of um, fun. I, I hate I'm, to unceremoniously yep. just bail on you, but I need nope. to unceremoniously bail. Yep. I'm going to say goodbye to the, to the stream.